Good day and welcome back. So this is the last installment on the A10. <clears throat> Essentially we got all the assembly done and then we go to now I'm going to go do all the painting, the weathering and so forth. Um, this kit went together quickly. Um, I kind of struggled with it a lot just really with <clears throat> staying focused and some of the way the details of it worked just it, it wasn't really working for me but that's that's I think more me than the kit so I ended up using this as a learning experience right which is you know kind of the point of doing modeling at least from my perspective um, but we got the building done in our last video so we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, painting weathering and final results here now so I started out with a light gray you know just <clears throat> needing to find out where all the seams that needed to touch up and things like that were going back unifying the color so then hit it with this is an army painter light green and it gives a good base it's the base of what I was looking for I probably should have used a lighter green first um, but this is a good medium green that's what I was after then I went back with the light green and the airbrush and this is where the airbrush and I really struggled but you know we got down the pattern once I got this in, I went for the dark green, very dark, it almost looks black, but isn't. And that finished off the camo. I know it's not like the ideal pattern, but it's taking me where, where I'm wanting it to go. So, all right, so yeah, the painting's done. The uh, airbrush and I do not get along. <laughs> um, I really struggled getting a good flow out of it. Now I feel like my problem is probably my paint. I've tried everything I know how to work with the Vallejo, um, the Vallejo colors, and I still struggle getting a good flow that doesn't seem to dry on the needle. Um, so I think the next one I do, I'll have, I'll go down a different route and I'll try something different. I, I really am not hyped about using um, lacquers, so I might give AK colors a try. But I mean, most of the colors I have here at the here at the bench are Vallejo because I'm used to using brush paint um, and again I'm used to doing a lot of miniatures so that was what I had gotten used to so stuff to learn anyway um, <clears throat> I do have the camo down yes I know it doesn't match the picture entirely but it does have um, <clears throat> it's taking me the, to the approximation which is what I want I do need to repaint this front part because that's white and then it has detail paint um, we got to the underneath as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I apologize. Um, and then I need to do some detailing up inside the engine. I do have have to retouch up the inside of the engine cowling. Now the engine cowling is only going to be up to about like that as it is, but it will show off the engine. So I need to get that done to where I can actually you know, have that on. Um, but now, now that the base coats are down, yeah, I need to go through and do the transfers. Once the transfers are on, I can go back and then hit it one more time with a finishing coat and then get into the weathering. So we'll go do those couple pieces of detail touch-ups and then do the transfers and move on. There's, I'm really not, I don't see the point in um, videoing doing the transfers because putting transfers on is putting transfers on. I think pretty much everybody's got a clue on how that works. So I'm just going to go ahead and knock that out and then... Uh, we'll get into what are the detail parts okay with that much done we've got the um transfers on and got them sealed down so now i can start the weathering um there aren't a lot of transfers and a lot of them you can only barely see like all these no steps that are along through here um however they're on and it's done wasn't that difficult so now i'll go ahead and i'll get the weathering started to it um, you know, there's the weathering up in here and then up underneath in the wheel wells and all that to get the, get that done. Um, and then I can start putting on the landing gear and we can start getting close to getting done. So we'll go ahead and get cracked in on that. Essentially the first thing is going to be just the oil weathering and, well, okay. So the first thing I need to detail those in because that's all done. Now I can detail paint the fans, get that taken care of. As we've gotten all this done, 
um, but I can do that detail work and then get the detail up underneath um, in the wheel wells, right? Get that all done up and cleaned up and just start getting, working my way around. So we'll get to that. So once again, I'm going to try something new. Um, I'm using, I've used these oil brushers before, but I've never used them straight from, straight from the uh, dispenser, which is theoretically the way they want you to. Um, normally what I'll do is I'll decant them out onto a pot and, and then use them like I use the uh, artist oils that I've used before. But I wanted to try this, you know, just get used to, well, not get used to, but like give an attempt to trying it the way um, MIG wants you to. Now the brown worked out fairly well. The sludge was nice. This light sand was, um, <clears throat> it settled far more quickly and was, I, met, it, I wanted to use it as a filter. I mean, you can see I'm using it like a dot filter, but it didn't clean the way I anticipate or as quickly um, or as nice, I guess, as, as I was hoping. So I do end up, you know, I get, I start by streaking, which is, you know, the, the beginning part. And then I'll go back with a small brush, add a little more spirit, and then wipe it down. And I end up getting the effect I want. It is a little bit different than what I'm used to using, but it was a good experiment to try. I enjoyed doing it. Um, and again, the whole this this model really was a, a learning experience. I'm trying a bunch of different new things with this and just, you know, w working and stretching my skills and, you know, practice is good and I can actually stay in that work. But uh, I like using these oil brushers. I still, the jury's out on whether I want to use them straight from the dispenser if I prefer them from the pot because I think right now I prefer decanting them out and running it that way. But overall, it was giving me what I wanted. It does what they're supposed to do. So once that's done, <clears throat> I'm going back to using pigments. And again, I know this is probably just me, but I prefer the look of these as a filter. I really, you know, I used the dot filter from the oils and that was nice, but I like the way this works. I like the control I can get with the pigments and I like the way it softens the colors a bit. And it's, like I said, it's maybe just me, um, but it's what I look, I, I feel like I have more control when I put it on. Um, and the overall look to it, it's drier. And I think that's what I'm looking for. And, and there's a, there's different spaces, right? There's places where I want the discoloration to be wet, um, <clears throat> to where it looks like, you know, grease, etc. But there's also just dry fading. And, and I feel like when this is done, these end up looking less like dirt and more like faded paint. And I suppose I could do that with with the oils. And that's something I haven't figured out how to master yet. And that's, you know, again, we'll do that on a um on another model. We'll keep working on it, right? And we'll keep practicing. But for me, I really like the way the, the pigments work um as a as a filtering process. So I go through here, right? And I'll I'll do the entire model with that and then I'll get the um, the final details put on. There's still the putting on of the landing gear which is done and then there's the putting on of the the missiles to the pylons which you know is essentially just assemble and put it on. So I've got the um, the doorway there for the um, ladder done Essentially, all I really need to do now is put those final pieces on, which I'll do as soon as I get done with this part. And then after that, it's it's pretty well finished. So we'll go ahead and get through to that, and then um, then call it the uh, call it finished. I didn't go with a heavy load of armaments just because it it wasn't going to look nice again to my eye. But we got those put on. We got the armaments put on. We got the landing gear put on, and. Now it's pretty much just button it up and be done. Okay, with that, the A10 is done. Um, for a kit, it was a pretty nice kit. For a building project, it was a good learning experience. There are a crap ton of things that I see that I could have done a whole lot better. 
Uh, but the only way you get better is to work on them. So, you know, the learning experience will go onto the shelf and then I will try again on the next one. Overall, though, it was fun, right? And that was what I really needed. I needed something that, A, was fun to build, fun to work on, but also something that was, was a fun experience, um, even though, you know, there were challenges, right? The ch even the challenges were fun. Um, <clears throat> I could have gone with more munitions. I chose not to simply because of the look, and this is was an aesthetic for me. Um, you know, I thought about having the, the whole thing, you know, all kitted out with a billion missiles or bombs and it just it just wasn't working for me um i was happy <clears throat> with the decision to do the engine so i'm going to change this view here for a second while i get down there um doing that engine was fun um i like the look of it i like that it is it gives more interest right um you know having done that doing the prop bar etc so that it, it can show off. I kind of liked it. Well, I, I do like it, not kind of. I do like it. So that was that was entertaining. Um, the cockpit came out the way... It, it came out better than I anticipated. Um, I'm still struggling with canopies. So I'm still struggling with a lot of things. So this is was a very good learning experience for me to work on. And um, it came out better in many ways than I anticipated... And again, I also see a lot of things I can do. I can improve on the next one. So I know the camouflage doesn't match the subject and the colors are probably off, but that's just, you know, me using the tools that I had at hand without investing in the specific one that I needed to do this, that, or the other. Um, I almost regret I didn't go with the gray color scheme because that's what I remember seeing growing up seeing those things hill hop you know I, I grew up not far from Fairchild where they were building this things in the 70s 80s and it was really cool seeing these just come roaring over the hills on test flights um but they were all they were all that gray um paint scheme but this was cool this is a nice it's interesting so I like it with that said um I will go ahead and put up a few pictures uh you know this this hobby boss model i i felt was good you know for a 148 scale this is my first venture into the 148 scale well not first but the first one that i've made some effort in um and i like it you know i, I feel like the kit went together well i feel like it was affordable um i feel like the opportunities to improve my skills and to make the model better are there in the kit so without a whole lot of expertise you get a decent subject and then you also have the opportunity to really kind of take it above and beyond you know building that engine or improving some of these scenes you know scenes really could use some some magic um but it was it was a good experience i i'm content to have done it so with that said um like i said i will put up some photographs there at the end of this in its finished state um, and we'll now move on to my next project. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. Please feel free. Put down any suggestions, hints, um, whatever down below. Um, I'll, I'll I read them all. I just request a, uh, you know, be somewhat respectful. But, and again, thanks everybody for watching and, and all the encouragement. I've been getting a lot. I really do appreciate that. So, you know, it's, I love learning and I love getting suggestions and I love hearing from other people that are, you know, on the same kind of journey. So until next time, thank you and happy modeling.